Hey, it's Joe Fair with Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to talk about this Echobee Smart Thermostat. I would picked up one of these because I thought it was kind of cool. It has Amazon software built into it. It also has these little sensors, they call them smart sensors, and they're occupancy and temperature sensors. And the idea is that you place them around your home, and then the thermostat can be smarter because it can detect where you are in your home, or if you're at home, and what the temperature is in the rooms that you're actually occupying. I thought that was really cool, so I picked one up. Let's talk about how to get it in the Home Assistant, and also let's talk about how to design a UI for it so that you can get all of the data that this exposes in the Home Assistant as well. But first, before we can do anything, we have to go to the Developer API site here, and we have to become a developer. And what this will do is get us a developer key. So we have to accept this agreement. And I'm gonna pause. And so what I did there is just finish it off. I had to pause it because I didn't want to reveal my personal information. But at this point, I have logged in and become a registered Ecobee developer. And all we're doing here is we're following on Home Assistant if you search for integrations and what you want to add. So in Ecobee here, we're just following this here. So become a developer on the site, log in, accept the SDK, fill in the fields, click save. And now we're going to go to the consumer portal and we'll log in there. So we'll switch back over to the consumer portal. We'll log in. And now that I've logged in the consumer portal, we can actually see the actual controller, which is kind of nice. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is go to this uh, here and we're going to say developer. I'm going to create a new developer. The application name has to be unique. It's not you, so it's no big deal. For a summary, I'm just going to say Home Assistant App ID. This doesn't matter here. This isn't going to be used, but it doesn't have to be unique. This does have to be unique. Authorization, I'm going to say Echoby Pin. I don't need a detailed description or an app icon, so I will click Create. And now I've created my de developer thing. Now, if I click on this, I'll get an API key over here, and that's what I want to use. This will help uh, authenticate me later. Okay, so now we're going to go from Echobee over to our Home Assistant. And we're going to want to get into, let's see, the configuration here. And then we're going to want to go to Integrations. So we'll click Plus and then go down to Echobee. There it is. And then here's where it wants that API key that we just had. So I've put that in and now it's going to say it wants to authorize uh, with a pin code and it gave me a pin code here. So for here, we'll go over to my apps and we'll say add application. Put in our code. Uh, that's me, the home assistant requires following view and change data. Yep. That looks good. Okay. Now I'm going to click back on Home Assistant and click Submit. And woo, all sorts of stuff lit up. Okay. Now that we have the thermostat in Home Assistant, we're going to want to create a UI for it. And I won't get deep in a Lovelace, but what I think I'll do is as I'm teaching how to add things, I'll talk about how to configure the UI here. Lovelace is the name of the Home Assistant UI that's customizable. And if you click on the triple dots, go to configure UI. First thing you can do is create what's called a view. So we're gonna hit this plus sign and say, climate for a title. We don't need any of this other stuff. And I'm gonna move it over just to show you can rearrange these here. So we'll put it there. I want the second one over. And now that tab is available to add widgets to. This add card here, if we click on plus, you see all the different types of cards we can add, light switches and such. These are each customized UI elements that are customized to the types that um, are meant to go in them, or they're elements for like organization, like vertical stack and horizontal stack are um, ways to organize things. I'm gonna click on thermostat and which is nice because it will give us a bunch of controls. And then if you click on Entity, all your thermostats will show up. Of course, I just have the one. And there's a preview of the card. 
it says home I'm giving a name just say thermostat and you can see that's where that's gonna go and then if I click Save there's my thermostat UI and now I can control my uh, max temperature my min temperature say I want this to go down or whatever let's add some other uh, cards here the thing about the echo B is it actually has sensors so let's look at here's the temperature sensor for the home so that's my main temperature sensor uh, echo B is sitting so I'll actually say this is dining room temperature you can see the preview here 71.2 degrees and add another one I'll add another sensor and let's see um, my wife's office there we go and we'll just say Amber's office okay so now we have two temperatures but you see they're they're kind of as you add things it rearranges it in a funky way here and this isn't really the clean UI I'm going for let's add one more sensor just to kind of clean master bedroom I'll talk about how to organize this in a second but the other thing that might be useful to have here is maybe the weather so if we hit plus we can see weather forecast and I'm gonna say the home my home weather a bit more minimalistic so now I've got my forecast temperature inside the house and then I've got temperatures around the house now I want to show different ways to actually represent this. Instead of having the numbers here, what if we had a chart? So if I add a uh, history graph, give it a name, and then if I go through my entities, let's do master bedroom. There we go. So downstairs master. And, and let's add one more. Let's see uh, my daughter's room. So this is another way to represent this if I don't want to have these numbers here and you actually get a bit of a history. The other thing about the Echo B is there are other sensors, but they don't actually show up in the sensor uh, format here. They'll show up under Entities. So if we click Entities and we can say Occupancy. And then here, um, my wife's office and downstairs master and Jacinda's room so these are occupancy sensors and right now there's nobody in any of those rooms um, because I'm in the makerspace but if there were somebody to show up in these rooms these would switch over there's a lot of data here and the main thing I wanted to show is different ways to pull out data and uh, from the Echo B and that you have access to the occupancy sensors now the thing about the occupancy sensors is the Echo B uses them to adjust temperatures in a this basically like artificial intelligence algorithm of you know don't heat up uh, a room that's a bit warmer if that's the only one that's occupied in the house like don't don't turn the temperature or, or the thermostat on so every one of these little sensors that are in my rooms are reporting if I'm in the room and what the temperature is in the room and that's how we're getting these two graphs I guess one thing I'll do real quick is I'm going to show how to organize these three because I think if you're ever doing anything like this, you're going to want this to be a bit cleaner. So we're going to add a card called a vertical stack. And the vertical stack is a bit more of a complicated card. So I'm going to, I'm going to save it with a broken config here. What I need to do is I need to get the YAML out of these three cards. And the way I'm going to do that is if you click edit and you click show code editor, and I think this will make sense as I as I get it going. I'm going to copy this code, go down to here, and I'm going to paste it in. Now the pattern I memorized is space space dash space. What that does is, oh, the other thing I have to do here is cards colon. A vertical stack will stack multiple cards. So what we're going to do is put this card under the vertical stack and then we'll put the other two and it will stack them up vertically the way we want. Okay, so I will save that. Okay, and that worked out. The dining room is there. Let's add Amber's office. So we'll do the same thing. We're gonna line up the dashes. Now remember YAML when you're editing it is very, it's indentation heavy. And typically the spacing is multiples of two. So these are four in, this is two in, except for this one, there's one space here 
this preview is a bit buggy. It may not show up correctly. That's okay. Just click save. And now you can see these are actually stacked on top of each other, which means I can, uh, let's see, I can remove this card. So we don't need dining room and we don't need Amber's office anymore. So I can remove this card. And now we're going to, uh, you see these are stacked up. We're going to add this master bedroom to it as well. So let's edit one more of these. Here we go. So now my temperatures are stacked up. I can add other bedrooms here. My occupancy is here. If I want to keep it, I can keep the charts. If I decide that's a better way to go, or maybe I just want to see the history. I've got my weather and now I've got my thermostat control. And yeah, I'm liking this. I feel like this is a pretty sweet dashboard for uh, my Echobee right now. I've got easy control. I've got history. I've got glance and go uh, data here for the temperatures. The occupancy for me personally isn't interesting, but I wanted to keep that in there in case you wanted to use it. And oh, there's one thing I'm missing. Okay, what about a glance card? So glance card, I can say type humidity, it filters down. And then I get the name, an icon, I can decide if I don't want the icon. Uh, let's see, that showed up here. I'm going to hit the up arrow. Yeah, there we go. So there's my humidity, my temperatures, occupancy. This is all of the data out of the Echo B4 uh, setup. Thanks for watching. I hope that was uh, a bit educational. I wanted to show it end to end. I wanted to show the getting the Echo B thermostat in the Home Assistant. And then I wanted to show you how to get all the data out and into a nice format. One thing I want to say is I'm, I'm not looking to become a home automation channel. I, the main reason I got into this was one, it was fun and I, I felt like some tutorials needed to be done, but there are some other channels that are way, way more talented and better at this. Uh, Dr. Z's, which I'll, I'll link to it's Dr. And then I think three Z's, uh, bra automation. I learned a ton from these guys are amazing. They do things on another level. So I highly recommend them if you get way into, uh, the home assistant. The main reason I'm showing this stuff is just to kind of give people a, a, a quick tutorial to follow, but also because I'm going to start linking things that I'm creating, like the uh, the lamp that I just did, the Veroni lamp, into this next. So once you're familiar with the UI and these cards and stuff, we'll be able to take the projects I'm building and hook them into home automation, which I think is just a really cool um, next level thing to do with a project. So. I really appreciate you watching. If uh, you like this, give me a thumbs up and you know, let me know in the comments what you think. And I hope you have fun. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll talk to you next time.